Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode. I am excited to be talking to you and continuing the revealing of our complete uh, buy and hold portfolio as well as our growth portfolio. Yesterday I put out a video regarding the SMH ETF as well as I'm going to be adding these videos as I keep on going. So look in the description for the uh, playlist down below because I'm as I complete and keep on adding our whole portfolio, I'm going to put it all on one uh, one playlist so that you can just use that playlist and watch all of the videos. Uh, this is our second largest holding. This is actually our largest holding via dollars uh, invested in. However, at the at the time of this particular video that I'm shooting it, we are actually negative on this particular ETF. We are out of the 11 ETFs in our portfolio, we are negative on three, QCLN, Cannabis, and IPay. So um, this is uh, 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 an investment that I want to speak with you regarding uh, my thoughts, why we're invested in it, wh where do I see, what role does this particular ETF play in our uh, portfolio, and what package, uh, uh, federal, federal aid package, I shouldn't really say federal aid, but what federal legislation do I believe that this particular uh, ETF is going to benefit the most from right after this. So we started investing in QCLN back in January of 2021. So a year ago uh, uh, from this particular month, actually not, yeah, a year ago from this particular month, uh, we started, we put a, a big initial de uh, a deposit into this uh, $8,000. That kind of sounds like a vehicle for some reason. I don't know why. But we invested $8,000 in the month of uh, January of last year in QCLN. And then since then, we have been doing about $300 a month with the first three months, January, February, March, uh, we were investing in it quite heavily. And the reason that we were investing in it quite heavily to the tune of maybe an additional $1,000 a month is because we were under the mindset at first that we were just trying to get this to 200 shares in our portfolio, and then we were going to stop investing with the cold turkey. However, uh, last year we changed our, our allocations and our thoughts and things on, on our portfolio about three times. And so with that being said, it got invested into quite heavily in the first quarter of last year. And then I would say around April or May, then we started doing the $300 a month there going forward. Uh, so again, this, uh, and then because at the beginning of last year, we did that plan, this was the first ETF that we were working on. And so that's why this one has the most dollars invested in, uh, in it at this particular moment, because we have just continued the $300 in addition to the uh, probably about 10,000, 10, 5 that we put in in the first quarter of last year between the original 8,000 and then another two to 2,500 bucks uh, from there. So uh, the expense ratio on this guy is kind of in the middle slash a little bit high, uh, 0 0.60. So for every $10,000 we have invested on an annual basis, we would be paying $60 a year uh, for the management of this particular ETF. Uh, this ETF outside of last year has actually done quite well um, when you look at its uh, compound or, or its average return over the last five ten years uh, last year was pretty tough on this on on this uh, it, it has a mixture of, of a lot of energy companies and when I say energy this particular ETF is all about kind of the clean energy movement so whether it be solar uh, um, wind power uh, uh, Hydrogen, you know, uh, fuel, electric vehicles, electric chargers, I'm missing something. Uh, lithium ion battery components, home energy solutions, so in phase. Uh, it, it has anything and everything that leads us to a more green um, environment regarding uh, energy and energy production and energy moving around um, our infrastructure. And so, with that being said, this was a uh, 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 my play regarding the Build Back Better plan that Joe Biden was 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 uh, uh, pushing and trying to get passed via legislation, but not only that, um, just with the movement of electric vehicles, Neo, Tesla, Xping is is some large holdings in this particular uh, ETF. 
But it, outside of the Build Back Better plan, our our world is just kind of going to this more clean energy, more green energy. And so I believe that this particular ETF is going to uh, fit that need and has a, a well-rounded sort of, of companies that is going to benefit from the transition from the current power and current energy source that we have to where we're going in the future. And so, uh, as I kind of mentioned, uh, Tesla, NEO, Enphase, XP, First Solar, they do have a couple other ones that I didn't list on here. Those were kind of the major big names that you might be familiar of, but they have a lot of uh, different uh, uh, companies that have to do with uh, the components of lithium-ion batteries. So you get a, a little bit of a feel for lithium-ion batteries across all electric vehicles as well as across um, – uh, I'm going blank here, but the uh, 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 the wall power uh, components that like Tesla and Enphase build, all of those are, are, are being tied to lithium ion. But then they have a lot of solar companies within uh, this particular ETF. And so this, uh, again, is what I feel and what can take us from where we currently are all the way into, you know, 2030 and so on as we begin as a country uh, and honestly kind of as a, as a world transitioning the type of power that we use and allows, as you might have heard me say in SMH, it gives us a long runway to be able to invest in this, this be a career investment uh, over the next 20, 30 years. And even once that transition and all of that happens, these particular companies continue to make dollars off of their components and their devices and their uh, manufacturing being installed and then have some type of residual income coming off of all of those components. So, again, I believe these companies uh, are going to allow us to be able to benefit from this transition for a long period of time. And so, as you can mention, or, or as you might uh, 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 recall from yesterday on the SMH video on that semiconductor ETF, this particular position as well plays a little bit more of an offensive role for us. Wants to do that 20 plus percent uh, year over year. Now, yes, as I said, last year it actually did, it did go negative. I believe about 8 to 10 percent negative last year. So we lost money on this particular ETF. Uh, which is why it is not our leader, and SMH is actually our leader. But uh, I believe, again, over the next 20, 20 years, 15 years, this particular ETF is going to do quite well. I am uh, investing into it con consistently on a monthly basis, and while it's down right now, I am enjoying bringing that, uh, that cost basis down. Uh, I want to say our cost basis is around $71 at the time of this recording, I want to say it's trading around the mid to low 60s, so we're probably about 10, uh, 10 to 14 percent down uh, at the at the time of this recording. And and honestly, I'm, I'm I'm fine with that. If I can get this cost basis to be an under under 70 bucks before it takes off, I'm gonna be very happy uh, with this particular ETF. A little side note: this is actually a, a, I have this particular ETF in my son's custodial account. I have three ETFs in my son's custodial account. This was the first one that. I uh, invested in him, in, invested in for him. I have uh, in his custodial account, I have $1,000 in QCLN. Uh, his cost basis is a little bit higher, not that it really matters. I want to say it's like around 75, 76. Uh, but uh, outside of that, yeah, let me pull up the uh, spreadsheet for you real quick so you can see some exact numbers on this bad boy, and then I'll let you get on out of here. Come on. Brilliant. There we go. All right, so QCLN, as you can see here, oh, wow, got more in here than I thought. We got $15,000 in this particular ETF. Our cost basis is $71. At the end of December, uh, the value of this was fourteen five. So as you can see, we're, we're down about 800 bucks, you know, 700 to 800 bucks here. And, um, and yeah, so, again, at this current time, I'm not really worried about it. I, I am going to be... Uh, constantly adding in. While I have this here, let's pull up my sons real quick and see QCLN. See, his cost basis is 76 bucks, and so he's actually down quite significantly. Uh, well, 100 bucks on his $110, $115 uh, as of December. But neither here nor there. Um, look forward for uh, the videos to continue to keep on dropping. Uh, I have done SMH yesterday, QCLN, and then I'm going to continue doing the rest of these as um, time passes to explain to you why these particular ETFs are in our portfolio, what I see from them, uh, the outlook that I have for them, and why um, they might be interesting for you to look at. Thank you so much. 
subscribe to the channel if this channel has been bringing you value. I really appreciate you guys watching the videos, and I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Thank you so much.